Welcome, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I am Brother Hosanna David. I want to talk about our weaknesses versus God's mercy. Our weaknesses versus God's mercy. The recent video I did, I talked about the mercy of God. We, who are God's children, we live in a world where there are so many vices, so many things that are capable of distracting us. Uh, it is now very difficult to walk uh, through a street, a busy street, or a street where you have humans to walk through a city without seeing things that can distract us. A lot of them, so many of them, so numerous. They are so flashy and in this world we are expected to please a father that is perfect we are asked to live a holy and a perfect life how possible is this a lot of times we are overcome by weaknesses by our weaknesses and we are not expected to live by the standard of our weaknesses, but by the standard of God. So what do we do? In the previous video I did, I said, we are not to live in sin, but if we make any mistake, if we fall, we are expected to rise up immediately, buckle up and continue our Christian walk with God. We don't need to remain in our fallen state. Romans 5, verse 20 and verse 21 says, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. Now listen to this. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Let me read NIV version, which is simpler. But where sin increased, grace increased all the more. Where sin increased, grace increased all the more. Why does grace increase? Grace increased because God's mercy cannot afford to let us go. Some people misunderstand this particular verse and they have the opinion that since the grace of God increases for us, we have to live in sin. No, this is not what it is saying. Uh, the next verse, which is in chapter 6, says, shall, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? It says, God forbid. How, verse 2, God forbid. How then, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So this is not an encouragement for sin. But what is Bible uh, verses, these two verses are saying, is that if a sinner goes deep into sin, the hand of God stretches longer to bring that sinner out of that sinful life. If a sinner kills, God's mercy stretches towards that sinner to bring the sinner out. Now, uh, let me tell you something. Uh, let me give you an example. For instance, um, okay, this is a reshabijibo light. Um, if this thing is stained with oil, uh, this one is, is, is reflected. Okay, this is a mobile phone. If it is stained with oil, just this little place is stained, you need little amount of soap and water to wash it, to rinse it. But assuming every part of it is stained and is dirty, what do you need? You don't need a little amount of soap and water to wash it. You need, more, you, you need a considerable amount of water and soap, more soap to wash it. That is what he's saying. If a sinner goes one mile, into the world, God's mercy goes ahead of that sinner. 
if that sinner goes a hundred miles, the mercy of God, why is God doing this? Because God does not want us to get lost. God reaches out to us wherever we are. So the mercy of God propels God, pushes God to reach out to us because God is compassionate. God's mercy endures forever. Lamentation chapter 3, 23 and 22 says, It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. That is true. If not for his mercy, we would have been consumed. Satan would have consumed us. Our sins, the repercussion of our sins, would have also consumed us. Because his compassion failed not. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Because his compassion failed, failed not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. God's mercies are new every morning. So do not say that your sins are too much and that God cannot forgive you. That is a lie from the pit of hell and it is what Satan uses against us, God's children. Some people will say, no, 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 I can't go back to God. I've done abominable things. I can't go back to him. Please go back to God. God is very much ready to forgive us. Romans 5, Romans 5 verse 6 says, For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Christ died for us while we were yet without strength. He died for us. So, if when we were condemned, he died for us. He came to die for us. What about now that he has died? Jesus Christ has died. He has paid the price. It is just for us to accept the offer by acknowledging our sins and repenting of them and resolving in our hearts that even if we are weak, we will follow God. That is it. You don't actually need your human strength to follow God. What you need is your resolution to follow. Make use of God's mercy. But I want to ask a very simple question. Do you know that God's mercy will expire one day? It expires at death. God's mercy expires when an individual is dying. Then you cannot add to your work again. You can't make use of God's mercy again. 